string buffer and string builder in Java. So here we are going to discuss string buffer and string builder and their respective comparisons. We know that in case of string objects we are having one problem that is the string objects are immutable. That means after defining the string object it is not possible for us to update the string object with the new values. So in that case we are having some problem. So those problems will get resolved in our string buffer and string builder in our Java. So the string buffer and string builder classes are used when there is a necessity to make a lots of modifications of to the strings of characters. Whenever those applications where this frequent and rapid update in the string content is going to take place, then you can go for the string buffer and string builder class objects. So unlike strings, objects of type string buffer and string builder can be modified over and over again without leaving behind a lots of new unused objects. So that's why the memory utilization will be fruitful and we can go on doing the updates on this string buffer and string builder class objects as when necessary as many number of times we want. It is recommended to use the string builder whenever possible because it is faster than string buffer. So it is recommended that instead of using the string buffer class objects, we can easily use the string builder class objects because their operations will be little bit faster. If you consider the time complexity, then you should go for the string builder class objects handling. But however, if the thread safety is necessary, the best option is the string buffer objects. That means whenever we are working on a multi-threaded environment, that means in that very particular case, when the multiple threads, that means the lightweight processes are executing in parallel, in those cases, the, for the thread safety, this string, that is a, however it is that the string buffer objects are the best choices compared to the string builder. So let us discuss more on this thread safety. So thread safe code is only manipulates shared data structure in a manner that ensures that that always the threads behave properly and fulfill their operations on the shared data structure without having unintended interactions. And that is the main definition of this thread safety. So some frequently used functions for string buffer and string builder classes. So here we have mentioned some of them which we use on a very regular basis. Capacity, it returns the current capacity of the string buffer and the string builder objects. So now we are having this append. So from this very function name, it is quite obvious that what is going to happen, that is insert new strings at the end of the previous string. Next one is the insert. This method inserts a string at the position men mentioned by the offset given. Next one is the reverse and reverse the sequence of characters in the string. So these are the very common usable methods both in case of string builder and string buffer objects and we will be using them in our code. So let us go for one practical demonstration on this concept for your better understanding. In this demonstration we are going to discuss string buffer and string builder class objects. At first we are dealing with the string buffer. So here you can find that one string buffer object class object has been defined that is S buffer which has been instantiated with this constructor here and the default capacity of this S buffer will be 16 here. So let us go for the execution you can find that when you are printing this S buffer dot capacity we are getting here 16. This S buffer is now instantiated with the string buffer constructor and here we are setting the capacity directly as 50 here. As a result of that when you are uh, setting that one so it is, it is having the capacity 50. So now again we are defining this S buffer with this string buffer uh, constructor and here we are passing one string as input argument. Then what will happen the, the 16 plus the length of the string will be the total buffer capacity. What is the length of the string if you go on counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 characters are there plus 16 so you are expecting the capacity would become 31 here. And here we are printing the S buffer directly. So S buffer has got printed that is my string buffer. Next we are dealing with the string builder objects. So string builder S builder is equal to new string builder my string builder. So these are string 
which will initialize this s builder so if you print this uh, s builder now this object if you print then it is printing my string builder next one is that with this s buffer we are appending a new string with this s buffer we are appending a new string here so and also with this s builder object we are appending another new string so here we are mentioning one uh, method that method is known as the append which is public return string buffer uh, object and then it name of the method is uh, append and it takes a string class object as input argument everything has been mentioned here so now after doing this append operation then what is the net outcome you can find that the pre-existing content is surviving the previous content is up to this part and the new content has got appended at the end and similar thing has taken place in case of string builder class objects also next we are initializing this s buffer and s builder with a new string so there is one string that is another string so s buffer dot insert 5 pqrst so what is the outcome here you can find that it is producing the out outcome that is a a b c a then p q r s t then b b c why sir, why it is so because 0 1 2 3 4 so after this fourth the fifth position at the fifth position this p q r s t will get inserted and then b b c will be there at the end you can find that we are having the same thing so one, 0 1 2 3 4 then at the fifth place pqrst has got inserted and the remaining part of this s buffer is there next in case of string builder if you do the insertion here that is at the third place we are inserting x y z so what is happening in this case so 0 1 2 then at the third place x y z has got inserted and the remaining part of this s buffer is still there next we are going for the reverse so s buffer dot reverse and s builder dot reverse so this particular reverse uh, method will actually reverse the content of this string builder and string buffer objects so you can find that the reverse is obtaining uh, has been printed and reverse of this current content has got printed here so in this demonstration we have discussed how to deal with the string buffer and string builder class objects and what are the different necessary uh, methods for whatever we can use in our coding for the for the for storing our string in a certain better way thanks for watching this video